Hello, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show on this Friday, the 22nd of November, 2019. Really glad to have you guys here. Now, here's the thing. Ray Dalio. I really listen to what he has to say. I really value this man's opinion. Uh, financial, when it comes to the financial system, he's been on the, 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 the cutting edge of making money within the financial system. He knows it inside out. Now, there's a great debate out there amongst amongst financial analysts. Will this system go into deflation and a debt default, where they default on the debt? In other words, a deflationary, and there's a lot of deflationists out there. And the other side of that argument is, will it go inflation? It has to go one of these two directions. The debt just cannot keep expanding exponentially forever. And interest rates falling down forever into zero territory. It just can't work that way. That will not work that way. It's going to take one of two directions, deflation or inflation. I value Ray Dalio's opinion. Let me see if I can pull it up here for you guys. Let's start the charts right here. And we'll try to get Ray Dalio's opinion. Let's listen right here. Someone who's holding that asset is going to be poor, and there could be a distributional piece of that. So making, to your point, if we simply write off the debt, we're destroying a tremendous amount That's of wealth. Right. So the way that it'll be done is by printing it and devaluating the currency, because that's the very subtle way, and it's also, uh, it, looks, it, it looks good. Be okay, he said the way it will be done <clears throat> is by devaluing the currency, printing and devaluing the currency. Of course, when he says printing, he just means money creation. And he said that the way it's done, that the reason why is because that's the subtle way of doing it. That's the, that's the way of handling this problem uh, without, see, deflation is so much faster. It can go through the system so fast. This is what they were fighting in 2008 was they said in a matter of hours, if they hadn't have reacted to it, if they hadn't have stopped it, within a matter of hours, it would have just melted the system down. And we're in that same predicament now, but only much larger, where deflation could go through the system and actually freeze the system. When that happens... They have to come in with massive amounts of liquidity to unfreeze the system again. And they will. They will. And Ray Dalio knows they will. They're going to paper over everything. <laughs> the amount of money that this is going to take is going to trigger certain things to happen within the financial system. So let's get on with the show today and let's take a look at what's going on. Let's take a look at the silver price today and see what they're doing. 1709 today on silver. It's holding its range. You can see over the last three days uh, that it's right in the middle of a certain range. Between the ranges between 1705 and 1715. And 1709 is right in the middle of that range. Let's take a look at gold. 1469 today. It's at $5.20. You know. Both deflation and inflation, if they go either one of those routes, it's it's a bad outcome. But deflation is much quicker and much worse. And you can almost breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief that the central banks will take the inflationary route and move us toward a hyperinflation rather than letting the system spiral into a deflationary uh, crash because... The hyperinflation takes a long time. There's a lead-in period for hyperinflation where the economy actually will tend to pick up a little bit because of all this printing of new money. You know, tremendous printing of new money speeds up the velocity of money. And that lead-in period is called the acceleration period where, they're, where you're accelerating into the hyperinflation. It's a lead-in period, and it can last actually for, for, for a long time. 
the lead-in before you actually get to the hyperinflation itself. And during that lead-in period, you will see hype, you will see inflation, but not hyperinflation. And we are already. One could argue whether or not we're actually in that lead-in period already, you know. And uh, that leading period, like I say, can last a long time. So hyperinflation is is a slow boil. It's something that they can control the easier, too, where deflation is so fast. It's so fast. It tears through the system so fast. They're terrified of it. They have to stop it at all costs. We could get a little bit of deflation. But they're going to react to it the same way they reacted in 2008. I just wanted to say that. Let's move on. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency today because this is the big story of the day. Today is cryptocurrency. The bottom's falling out of it. 190 million. Let me just refresh the page. 189 million. I mean billion. Sorry, billion. 189.7 billion. Bitcoin dominance is 66.3%. And we see the coins falling off a cliff. Uh, some of our favorite coins right now are, are, are on sale. Bitcoin, 69.63. Ethereum, 143 bucks. Uh, I mean, if you, were, if you were looking at a clothing department store and I was reading the sales catalog, these would be really cheap prices compared to what you're used to hearing, you know. Uh, Bitcoin, under $7,000. You know, guy say, I'm going to get to that sale, you know, because uh, if you were reading a sales flyer, you know, he'd say, I got to get to that sale, man. Where is that? Those prices sound really cheap to me. Uh, <laughs> Bitcoin Cash, 198 bucks. Litecoin, $45. <laughs> EOS, $2.53. Binance Coin, $14.73. Bitcoin SV, $91.52. Stellar. Uh, 5.6 cents. Anyway, those are the coins today, and they're all on sale <laughs> for a limited time. Uh, you know, the lower they go, the higher they're going to bounce on the other end. It's just, it's just the way markets work, you know. And they always, you always get this. You always get a test of the bottom several times before a market goes back and uh, out of comes out of a bear market and goes back into a bull market again. You always get these bottom tests, and I think that's what we're doing right now. We're getting ready to test bottom again. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. Fifty-seven ninety-nine. Now, how many of you believe that this thing can go up forever and ever and ever and never ever end? And this is a new paradigm. We're in a new a new cosmic shift for the markets. We're going to go up forever. Nothing goes up forever. Anyway, uh, let's take a look now at uh, the oil. Oil is uh, it's at uh, 14 cents down today, 0.24%. And now let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries. So what we're seeing here is the very longest end of the yield curve. We're seeing the yields fall a little bit, but the yields are rising, uh, but they're rising insignificantly so far. So we're probably going to see a little bit of a shift later today, and it's going to take more of a pot, more of a direction down or up. Right now, they're not moving much, uh, and, and they're they're a little bit undecided just yet which way they're going to go. Uh, uh, these bond yields, but. Uh, we see all the middle of the yield curve moving up a little bit, but it's only very marginal. We don't see any big moves yet in in this market. So we're going to have to wait later in the day and see if it starts to make some moves and which direction it'll move. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index today. 98.03 on the U.S. dollar index. Uh, the dollar's riding high, riding strong, up over 98. Now, uh, let's take a look at this article. Now, you know, China and the United States are locked in a heated trade war. And uh, what this is doing is it's, uh, well, right now a couple ships are, are sailing down in the South China Sea. And there's a lot of tension there. 
In fact, there's a lot of tension all the way around between the United States and China caused by this trade war. I don't see it being settled anytime soon. It says in this article, as the two largest economies in the entire planet decouple from one another, it's going to cause global economic activity as a whole to dramatically slow down. Corporate revenues will fall. Now that is the thing that I myopically focus on. Corporate, corporate rev, revenues will fall. You know, the corporate bond market. We got one huge problem there. We got so many bonds rated at triple B in the corporate bond market, you know. And they've been bought into really heavily by pension funds which need a high rate of return. But they're not allowed to hold those if those drop below triple B rating into the junk category. And as corporate revenues fall, caused by this dramatic slowdown brought on by this, the two largest economies on the planet decoupling from one another because of a trade war, well, we could face a, a monumental problem in the corporate bond market with the with the ratings, you know, of these of these uh, of these AAA bonds. Anyway, listen. Thank you guys for listening to this show. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Catch you guys in the next show. Bye bye.